What is Omath World? We're back at it again here at the Is Omath YouTube channel. And today we're talking about transformations of trigonometric functions. And there's nothing to it but to do it. So let's jump into one. Okay, so here I have a problem. Sketch one period of the function f of t equals 3 sine of 2t minus pi over 2 and then plus 1. And let me show you the first thing that you always do to these problems. So I've got f of t equals 3 times the sine 2t minus pi over 2 plus 1. Our first step to make life easier is always you do 3 times the sine of and inside the parentheses there for the sine you've factor the 2 out, out of that t and the, the pi over 2. So it's going to be 2 times t minus, and when I pull a 2 out of pi over 2, you got to think about this for a second. I always think of going back the other way. That is, I know it's going to be pi over 4 because when I multiply the 2, when I distribute the 2 back to the pi over 4, that's going to leave me with my pi over 2. Okay? And plus 1 remains the same. And now we need to talk about a few things. First thing I want to talk about is the amplitude. Okay. So the amplitude for this function is for always for our sine and cosine is always going to be given by the coefficient of the sine itself out there. That that's going to be three. That's going to tell us how far it's going to come from its center position. You know, sine usually goes from negative 1 to 1, but now when I'm multiplying by 3, it's going to go from negative 3 to 3. But we're also adding a 1 on the end, and we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But that's going to be the amplitude. Next, let's talk about the period. We know that it typically takes the sine, and that's why I use t here. For I want to talk about this in time. It takes the sine 2 pi to go around the unit circle to do a full full period. But now, we're multiplying that that uh, that t by a 2. So that's going to make it run around twice as fast. Uh, that's going to make it have a period of pi because it runs around twice as fast. And how, and how you find that is always going to be, so to find the period formally here, you always just take that that coefficient of t uh, and you do 2 pi divided by whatever that coefficient of t is, so it equals pi. But really think about it as that 2 there is making it run around the unit circle twice as fast as it normally does. And I want to introduce something here called the magic number. And the magic number is simply take your period and divide by 4. Pi over 4. And what's that, what that is going to tell me is if you look at the unit circle, that's not what I wanted. If we look at the unit circle here, okay, so this thing has a period of pi. Period is pi. And so what I've done, that means it's going to take it pi, let's say pi seconds to go all the way around the unit circle. And so what I'm doing with this magic number here of pi over 4 is I'm just dividing it up into quadrants. I'm fine. If it takes pi to go all the way around the unit circle, then it's going to take uh, pi over 4 seconds to go from there, from the beginning to the top of the circle there. It's going to take uh, pi over 4. I'm going to send seconds here just for fun. So I've got something to say pi over 4 seconds, and then it's going to take another pi over 4 seconds to go, let me draw that in a different color, it's going to take another pi over 4 seconds to go there, again pi over 4 seconds, and then another pi over 4 to do the third quadrant, another pi over 4 to do the fourth quadrant. So it allows me to graph this function easily, and I'll show you how I use it in just a minute. Uh, so next, let's talk about the uh, what do I have next here? The phase shift. And that's going to be your horizontal. 
horizontal shift. And here's how I always think of this. I want to know how do I make that thing in there zero? Because I know I, when I just start out with my normal sine function, sine of t, I, I start out with zero. I'll do sine of zero. So I want to figure out how do I get sine of zero inside here? Well, if I look at this this part of it, it's clear to get to get a zero in there, I have to let t be pi over four. And that's going to be our phase shift. And I'll show you what that does in just a minute. And the last thing I want to talk about before we get moving is our vertical shift. That's the easiest one. The vertical shift is going to be just given by this number on the outside over here, so it's going to be 1. That is, it's going to take all my outputs and add 1 to them. Okay? So, let's use this stuff. I've pre-drawn a graph over here that has my amplitude of 3, my period of pi, my magic number of pi over 4, my phase shift of pi over 4, and my vertical shift of 1. What you see here, the graph that you see here in red is the actual sine function, because I'm going to transform that. Okay? So, the first thing that I look at is the vertical shift. Let's draw, let's go in white until we get ready to draw. So the vertical shift here, that vertical shift is going to move my center line up to 1. Okay, so I've done my vertical shift. The next thing I look at is the phase shift, that horizontal shift. Okay. What that tells me is that this starting point of sine t here has been shifted over to pi over 4. So, but I know I'm no longer, the, the, the t axis there is no longer my, my center line, so I'm actually bumped up to, let's go in this magenta color, I guess. That's going to be my first point, okay? And now I simply use the magic number. The magic number tells me to get around the first quadrant of the circle to make sine equal 1, I, ha I, ha I have to go over pi over 4. And I've labeled my axes here in increments of pi over 4 for convenience. I go over pi over 4 to right here, and then I go up 1. But I don't go up 1 because I'm multiplying my sine by 3, so I actually go up 1, 2, 3 and get that point. Okay, and now again I use my magic number, so I was right here, so I go over another pi over four, and I know that I'm I finished the second quadrant, and I'm at sine of sine of pi is zero, so sine of pi is zero, but but I've added some three times zero zero, but I've added the one, so my center line still keeps me right here. Now. So we were there, we go over another pi over 2, uh, another pi over 4, my magic number, and I know that I finished the third quadrant, and I'm down where the sine value is negative 1. But I've multiplied by 3, so I have a negative 3, and I've added 1, so I have, what, negative 2? Uh, so I, well, really, I know that from the center line, I'm down 3. So from the center line right here, I'm down 1, 2, 3. So that's going to be my other point right there. And then I know I complete the rotation around the unit circle. If I go over another magic number, that completes the fourth quadrant. And I know I'm back where I started. And that is right here. So this. And notice that I never even looked at the function again. All I need is this information here and some clear intuitive knowledge about what the sine function looks like then I just transform it so that would be one period I'm going to do it on time 940 so that's going to be one period of the function f of t equals 3 sine of 2t minus pi over 2 plus 
okay rewind this video watch it a couple times these are tough to get but once you get it it's not that bad but it, but it's tough to get in that frame of mind and really trying to understand what's going on with these trig functions and less just memorizing an algorithm but really trying to understand what's going on with them and you will find that, it, that, that life is much simpler and for those of you who are getting into math, science, your STEM careers, engineering you need to know how these sine functions behave. Okay. Next video I'll do a transformation of a cosine function. See you there.